So, Megan, thank you so much for joining me. I'm so excited. Um, obviously, because I've been following you for a while now, and I just think that you're such an inspiration for just for me as like a woman. I just really enjoy just like following you and seeing you like own your shit and just be a bad bitch. So I was like, I would love to do something with you. <laughs> um that must be kind of like might get kind of odd like people always telling you like you're so like such a bad bitch you're so like powerful blah, blah, blah. And I think obviously being like in the public eye and also being so sex positive and so liberated um does that sometimes get a little bit like do you feel the, like the, the pressure in that like always being this kind of like strong powerful woman which you are but that must get like a little bit I don't know you must have moments when you're like I'm actually having like a bad day like like it's quite difficult yeah I try to be as honest as I can with like anyone that follows me I think there's too many people on social media especially people who've come off like reality shows and they feel this pressure to just show like the highlights like they'll show them on like a red carpet or them going and buying the most bougie things or them doing an ad campaign and I think yeah that's lovely and of course anyone it's like human nature to want to show the good parts but I try and be as honest as I can like if I'm having a bad day I will I don't know I put quotes on one time I put me crying in bed and it wasn't for like any kind of sympathy or to be like oh look at me I'm such but just to show people like you might think that I've got like all these followers and that I've gone on a reality show and I'm living my best life but I'm just like anyone else I still have days that are a challenge like I think mental health is like a roller coaster it's not just like there's a quick go to therapy a few times and you're you're fine and like mental health I just try to be as honest with every aspect of my life whether it's like my sexuality my past in the sex industry or mental health I just try and be as honest and transparent with everyone and I think that's just like another reason why kind of I look up to as well because that's the thing like the glitz and the glamour is amazing and you know we, I'm sure like we we both enjoy it but there's like another side and I feel like it gets it's very easy to get like wrapped up in that and then you forget like oh my god there's actually like a lot of pe people sort of especially young people like looking up to me and like this can't just be it for them like this can't be like their that what they look up to because it's it takes a lot of kind of maintenance and also it's like a lot of it isn't even real. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, and I I'm... guess you're the same with your audience. Like I came to see you at, um, I can't remember, where was it? JAY? Somewhere I came to see you. Heaven, yeah. And all these girls are like, oh my God, she's stunning. She's... And that's like you at your best. Like you've got dressed up, that you're like your moment to shine. But do you as well, like really like natural or stuff? Think... Yeah. Stuff? It's true because that's the thing it's important for me obviously I want to look my best at some times and like obviously the pictures that I post like I want them to look good but then I did a thing <clears throat> for um like the first issue of my zine where I I basically showed I posted like what I how I faced you in my pictures because I was getting so many like comments saying like oh my god like you're so pretty like I'm so ugly why don't I look like this and I was like this is not the message that I want to put out this is not right so I was like, look, like, this is not me saying I'm going to stop using Facetune because that's like unrealistic, but I just wanted to show them the process that like to get this perfect picture, like, I don't, I just, love that. I don't just take the picture and go like, there's a lot of editing that goes into this. And I just thought if I'm going to do it, I need to be honest about it and not just pretend like this is me, like just rolled out of bed. Do you know what I mean? That um, is, I think everyone do that I mean I would personally be petrified because there is a lot of tweaking <laughs> so like even the picture that I chose like, the, the picture that I chose before I was like I could have chosen some like rotten ones but I was like no I'm not ready yet I'm not at that level yet so I chose one that like wasn't too bad but still like I cinch in the waist like I lift it's just like I just give myself like a fucking facelift like make the lips a bit bigger but you know Don't what we know. I love the I and never really I've got like one eye lower than the other so I always have to like even my eyes out so they're on the same level <laughs> that's the thing, but I feel like now using Facetune it's like I'm noticing things that are like wrong with me that I didn't even notice before because I'm it's so easy to just go and change it when really I was like before I used Facetune like I didn't even notice that like this was a same. bit I thought I was quite a person <laughs> you know what we throw it in the bin we just throw it in the bin that's what I think um so obviously you touched on obviously like coming out of reality TV series and there's there's 
you know, pressure to be this way and that way. And I just kind of wanted to know just for you personally, suddenly having all of that kind of media coverage. And I know that then you got a lot of stick where it was like, oh, Megan's bisexual now and la 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 la. She wasn't doing that in love. And it's like, how, I mean, I guess that must have been quite intense. And it's also like, I, I always feel like bisexual women always have to explain why they're bi and explain like, well, I can like men and I can like women. It doesn't mean I'm straight and just having fun. Like this is my sexuality. This is my, who I am. How was that for you? Cause I understand that can be hard for somebody that's not in the public eye. So for you kind of going through that and having everyone's eyes on you and having fucking dumb people judge you, like how, how did you kind of overcome that? And are you still kind of dealing with that like on a daily basis? Yeah, I do feel like coming out was like the scariest thing. I think since leaving Love Island, like everything else, I walked into the villa and I was very transparent and honest. Like, I think one of the first things I said was, yeah, I'm an ex-stripper to like someone who was a doctor. And I was like, oh God, I can imagine how this is going to be perceived. I knew people would criticise me for that. And I knew people would criticise me for like the surgery I've had. And I've made no like I haven't tried to cover it up and be like oh no I'm just natural like I fully own everything but coming out as well was something that was like super scary for me because I felt like there were so many elements where I could be judged so I felt like because I'd come off of reality tv and not mentioned it in the show because I already knew like I said that the surgery and me working in the sex industry was something that people would criticize and judge so I thought let's not add to that um then obviously I was quite like sexualized like in the program I was like the one who slept with two guys um they put me in like a stripper outfit like I was very like sexualized so I thought if I come out as bi I don't want this to be like for the male gaze or people to think it's for like I'm trying to like sexualize myself even more and like do it for attention for a headline so that was really worrying and I worried that, like, the whole LGBTQ plus community wouldn't take me seriously and think, like, oh, my God, is she just doing this for a bit of, like, fame, for a headline? So, yeah, I was super worried. But I guess the more you grow as a person and with age, you get more confident and comfortable. And I learned from coming off that show that people are going to have opinion on anything. People were criticising me for how I looked completely natural at the age of like 15 and people were going in saying how ugly I was. You can't please everyone. People are going to have an opinion on anything you do, if it's an outfit, if you put on white, if it's a hairstyle. So I just thought, you know what, I'm going to be as authentic as I can to myself. And I got offered this dating show and it was a really public way to do it, I guess. But I just thought, fuck it, I'm not going to go on there and not date women that I could potentially have a relationship with. And I, at that point, I'd only seen women and dated women and thought, oh, it would be a bit of fun. Because I always wanted kids, I was like, can I do that with a woman? But obviously, coming off the show, I had more money. I felt like I don't need, for a long time, I felt like I needed a partner to have a house, to have a child. But now I think, where I've got my own independence. If I want to have a baby by myself, I can do that. <laughs> yes, you can. You don't need no man. No, I think that's, I think that's fucking amazing. And I always, because I remember, because I watched that um, series of Blood Island, and I remember when you came in and I was like, this girl is like fierce. And I thought that was so great that you, at that point as well, you didn't see people openly talk about sex work and it be and it not be this thing that someone was like a bit ashamed of or whatever it was like this is real work and these girls work hard and it's like it's and it's like if only because it might not be what you want to do it doesn't mean it's something that isn't fine for somebody else and I just thought like I I was watching that and I was like this girl's cool man <laughs> it's funny that you say that when you know when you came out as bi and you thought you didn't want people to think you're doing it for the male gaze I had, um, I had a discussion with a girl, Chloe Howe. I don't know if you've heard of her, but she's a sort of like, she was an artist and now she's the kind of like sex activist, like sex coach. And we were yeah. talking, she was like, it's quite funny that um, society doesn't really respect a sexuality that doesn't, that doesn't center around cis men. And it's like, even a woman saying she's bi or sometimes a woman coming out as, as gay, it's like, oh, she's just doing it for male attention. And it's like, not everything is for you. Like, it's not about you. <laughs> And I just thought that was so funny because ugh, men just have the audacity. That's what I think. Yeah, typical cis men trying to make everything about them. <laughs> oh, so boring. <laughs> um, now, I would like to 
so obviously you've come to this point now where you feel comfortable enough to be really open and like you post about having your bad days and it's not all was that like a process and how did you kind of get to that stage because I know for me it took me a while to like the idea that I would post a video of me like facing my pictures like I thought I would never do that then it got to a point I think for me where I was so kind of confident in what I had outside my appearance like I'm a great songwriter like I put on a good show like I know I'm a good person so my appearance isn't actually like the be all and, and end all of my existence so I think that's why I was like I can be a bit more honest but for you how how like how was that kind of process for you? I guess it's pretty similar like in a way I never saw myself other than I was good because I looked like I was a glamour model before Love Island I was on any fans I earned money from that so everything I'd done career-wise was based around the way I looked and then to go on a show and have well not exposed but I guess exposed so like the pictures of me before surgery and people are tearing me down for the way I looked it kind of made me realize that people that are still following me and say the things they say to me like oh you're so amazing for what you do to women it's completely like on a different page to the way I look like I could do you know what I mean so I think that was a big eye-opener because yeah. before a lot of um self-worth I guess on the way I looked and I thought oh it's like the only thing I'm not academic I don't have many talents I always say to my friends that like, one's a makeup artist one's the hairdresser I'm like what am I bringing to the team but um yeah I think it's really made me realize that it's not about the way I look and there's so much more I've got to offer as a person I'm so honest I'm so outspoken and I really do say what I believe which I think takes a brave person to do there's not many people that would come out and be given the platform I've been given and really be as brutally honest as I have so yeah I guess the same as you you've definitely not taken the easy route and I think that's something that is really kind of you know it's something that you, you can't not like you can't not respect it if that makes sense because it's not I can imagine that even at my level I'm like oh god like I get people sort of like judging me and I get these like miserable old men like you're a man hater like you're this you're that like oh yeah. and I'm just so you know props to you for kind of going in like head first and it, it kind of makes me feel like when it went if you hold yourself in a certain way like we're both confident and like you know say you being a glamour model and all this so then when certain things come out like pictures you don't want to come out or like things that kind of you weren't aware of that are, are being posted and stuff if that makes sense it kind of it, it it gives it kind of gives people the fuel where it's like oh well she's a glamour model or all she sings about this so like why does she care that we're talking about this and I think it still highlights how much like consent is such a sort of issue now because it's like you know your your choices you made they were the choices you made so it's like you have ownership of that and you can you're allowed to choose what you show to the world so when someone takes something and goes puts it out there and it's like oh well, she won't care because she's done this this and that and it's like yeah but that was with my consent and that's how I chose to like chose to show so I think that's still such an issue that people are still just thinking that because you're a confident person or because you're this and that like you won't care and it's like actually I do yeah. I chose you're still human yeah you're still human just because you've got this like glossy Instagram where you look stunning and you put on this really like confident persona I'm still human like it's still gonna hurt me I can say like oh I don't read the trolling on the daily mail I don't go looking for the comments but you'll still see like the odd thing and just because like you said we're both confident women and we're both outspoken it's gonna like we're human them comments are still gonna like sting a little bit and yeah I think people need to realize that as well like I think anyone that gets trolled like in our industry people do think we're invincible and it kind of the blue tick and these glossy images and the cool things that we do people kind of dehumanize us I think and think that we don't have feelings and we do right <laughs> strong bad bitches which we are we've got feelings <laughs> you know <laughs> now I want to talk about something very exciting um, you have obviously got a partnership. I want to make sure I'm saying it right. Lilo? Lelo, yeah. Lelo, Lelo, Lelo. Oh my God. All right, Lelo. You got a partnership with Lelo. Tell me about that. 
I've been on the website, I'm not going to lie to you. I've been like trolling and I'm like, hmm, what should I get? <laughs> oh, this is so exciting. How did that come about? And what made you decide like, this is the kind of company that I want to be involved in? Like, how did it, you know, how, how did it come about? So I was super picky. Like when I left the villa, I didn't want to be the generic Love Islander and do the teeth whitening, even though I've got a full mouth of veneers. I was like, I don't want to be that person. So, yeah, I feel like Lelo was a brand I've always wanted to work with. They'd done a collab with Amber Rose. And for me, she's a massive inspiration role model. I love her. Absolutely love her. So, yeah, I heard about the brand through Amber Rose, like, ages ago before Love Island. And i um, really keen to work with them. I just love everything they stand for. Not only are their toys amazing as i'm sure you've seen like literally game changing i could happily be single for a good few years now with their selection oh, no this is exactly what i need in my life right now like i was looking and i was like i don't even know what some of this stuff is but i want to use it <laughs> i was like i will be a happy person if this is in my life <laughs> uh, a discount code so i can help you out for this second lockdown we're probably yeah. gonna ask <laughs> oh my god yes the plug thank you so much <laughs> I just love everything they stand for and they're like so into like women's health and sexual wellness and it's not all about people think like sex toys it's super seedy and there has been such a taboo around women's pleasure but their whole message is really to take time to discover what you like solo and then take it into the bedroom and I think that's so powerful and important because there hasn't ever been this discussion about women's pleasure like at school you'll have sex education and you'll get taught about STIs, STDs and don't get pregnant. No one ever speaks about women's pleasure. So I just love everything they stand for really. Take the pleasure into your own hands, take time to figure out what turns you on, what you like, and then take that into the bedroom and be confident in the bedroom. It's so, it's so true, isn't it? Because especially like, you know, for us, I'm guessing it was the same for you, like growing up, even just in like the media and songs and like films and, and even in school, like it was like, the idea of pleasure was always centered around men. Yeah. And it was like, you know, you were never sort of shown that like what women like and that women actually enjoy sex as well. It's not just for the man. So um, I think that's really important and it's so true. It's like, how are you meant to know what, you're li- what you like when you're taught that you shouldn't really be exploring it? Cause that's more of like a guy thing. Cause I remember when I was growing up and you know, just first like, getting with boys and doing that. And I was always so terrified about it because I was scared that I wasn't going to be good. Like I wasn't going to be good in bed and I wasn't going to be able to perform and I wasn't going to do that. And it was like, what about what I want? Like, what, if, what about what, like, what is he doing that's pleasing me? Like, why am I so worried about my performance for him? Like, this is a two way street. Like sex is yeah. about people. So, um, I just thought seeing somebody like yourself who is, you know, obviously in the public eye, um, speaking openly about, you know, pleasure, I was like, this needs to happen more often. It's going to be such a taboo subject, you know? I was like, cool. Because I, I was like, I need to explore. I need to explore what I like. Because at this day, I'm 23 years old and still I'm just like, do I even know? Probably not. <laughs> um, another exciting thing is obviously your podcast. Yes, I, I can't. love a good podcast. So it's you come first. Yeah, obviously, tell us about it. Tell us, tell us all we need to know. So you come first. It's basically unfiltered, unapologetic, brutally honest truth of how to put yourself first in all different situations, whether it's like your mental health in the bedroom with a partner sexually, your career. So I just really wanted to have like a frank and honest chat because. Yeah, like you said, there's not many people that will be as brutally honest as myself. So I thought it's an ideal opportunity to just speak to all different people, all different walks of life for their like personal experiences. Because growing up, like you said, it was all centered around like the men, male pleasure and stuff like that. No one really spoke about it. So I've got like a few of my stripper friends on. I've got all different people, really exciting, interesting people that you wouldn't really hear on the average podcast. So yeah, it's going to be a good fun. A lot of laughs, a lot of tears. <laughs> Honestly, I'm, I, I love this podcast. It really like calms me down. So I'll be tuning in. I'll be the first to tune in. I'll be like, I need this in my life right now. I need some realness. Um, well, this has been so nice. It has been so good. 
to you. Honestly, when I messaged you, I was like, is she going to do it? Like, is she going to reply? And then when you did it. I was like, yes. <laughs> so thank you. I know you've always been like a big supporter of mine. So I really appreciate that as well. Yeah. And it's just nice to have just like another, you know, person in this world that you know is, is a supporter and is just, just like good vibes, like no weird shady shit. Like you're just great. And I love it. Yeah. You're yeah, and when this world gets back to normal and you have another gig, I need to come 100%. You killed yeah. it. I don't didn't, I didn't know what happened. I didn't even get to see you. I was like, where's Megan? <laughs> I was like, where is she? <laughs> I, know, I was like, right. And, and then we just got so <laughs> Well, yeah, when this crazy world gets back to normal, like, I'm there. I'm in there. <laughs> I'll be your biggest fan. <laughs> All right, well, enjoy the rest of this lovely Monday that we're having. Oh, thank you, babe. You too. Yes. Hopefully I'll see you soon. Yeah, speak soon. Bye.